Excellencies, Regional Director of WHO EMRO, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and assalamu alaikum. I'm really sorry for not being able to join you in person today due to a conflicting engagement which I had committed to a long time ago. But I'm very much here with you in spirit as you deliberate on this important agenda. NCDs have been on public health's back burner for a very long time. For over half a century, we have known about the consequences of unaddressed NCDs and their risks. Strokes, many forms of blindness, heart failure, end-stage renal disease, amputations, gangrenous legs, disfiguring preventable cancers, the crippling effects of obesity, and the suffering, disability, the impoverishment, opportunity costs and caregivers burden. But as a global community, we have failed to mount an adequate response to address these mammoth problems. This is not because of lack of interest from your sides. I have to say, I know most ministers of health in the EMRO region are passionate about addressing NCDs, but the challenges we, which you are up against cannot entirely be addressed by ministries of health, which is why the convening of heads of state in September is so crucial. And in the run-up to that, we need to advocate aggressively so that we can mobilize support at the highest level for this agenda, uh, which is truly crippling a generation. So within this context, the High-Level Commission on NCDs has been established at a sensitive time to lend further impetus to the NCD movement. It is a commission mandated by WHO, which five of us have committed to co-chair the President of Uruguay, the President of Sri Lanka, the President of Finland, the Health Minister of Russia and myself. The Commission has 26 members in all which are drawn from all over the world. Uh, several Health Ministers and experts sit on the Commission. The Commission's terms of reference divided its mandate into two phases. Uh, the first one concluded, as you know, on June the 1st with the publication of the Commission's report. Um, and as you know, this was launched just as the New York-based intergovernmental negotiations in the run-up to the third high-level meeting on NCDs got underway. The Commission had three months to come up with the report, which was a very ambitious turnaround for reaching group consensus from such a diverse set of viewpoints. And the reason why we chose a very ambitious target was because we wanted to influence the political declaration of the high-level meeting. Uh, and it now seems that we have done so strongly, judging by the way, um, uh, you, you know, the content of the political de declaration is evolving and especially its current uh, iteration. I know uh, several commissioners may be in the room and I wish to thank them for their inputs and personal active participation in this effort. Let me quickly give you an upshot of the Commission's recommendations. First and foremost is the recommendation for WHO to prioritize NCDs given its enormous leverage to impact change in developing countries. We know there is a huge demand from countries for support to address NCDs. Uh, this is also evidenced by data from uh, the country cooperation strategies in more than 115 countries. Uh, but this need for technical assistance is not mirrored into budgetary realities. Um, and therefore, in order to address this huge gap, donors and member states will have to step up their contributions to WHO for NCDs so that the organization can meet the rapidly increasing demand for country support. Secondly, there is a strong recommendation on political leadership explicitly stating that the responsibility for NCDs cannot solely be delegated to ministries of health and that heads of state must play a key role given the multi-sectoral construct of the needed response. You know that to be successful, NCDs need to be plugged into universal health coverage plans, into primary health care reorientation initiatives, into long-term national development initiatives, into SDG implementation roadmaps, in social protection policies, into resilience programs, into national metrics, reportings and accountability frameworks and so on and so forth. 
There are various government approaches that need to come into play ranging from regulation, taxation, subsidies and disincentives to incentives, investments in public programs and behavioral nudges. Our commission believes that this wide ranging agenda has implications for responsibility at various levels of government and that it is critical for commitment to flow from the top. In the third place, the commission calls for the integration of NCDs and mental health into in country scale up of universal health coverage. We strongly feel that it would be a tragic missed opportunity if UHC plans and countries fail to address the world's leading killer. We could actually end up undermining the economic viability of UHC if that was the case. In the fourth place, the Commission has called for the establishment of an independent accountability mechanism modelled on Countdown 2030 for maternal and child health. We believe this would represent a quantum change from the current self-reporting model of accountability. The Commission has also recommended that countries need to prioritize action because that is the key to achieving the scale up uh, countries need to reach SDG 3.4. But at the same time, we have emphasized that this needs to translate into bold political action in order to protect public policy from undue influence. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the 2011 political declaration on NCDs called for engagement with the private sector, but progress has been very slow and therefore our commission considers a fresh approach. We have encouraged governments to engage with the private sector based on the health is the priority principle. WHO has been asked both to support this engagement as well as facilitate regulatory action and consider the establishment of an international code of conduct to restrict the marketing of unhealthy products. The Commission has recommended that we tap the expertise of marketing experts and behavioral economists for designing public health campaigns and that we engage the civil society and patients groups optimally. In terms of measures to foster public private engagement, the Commission has called for two institutional structures. One, the establishment of a health forum for investors so that the health community can engage with investors, investment companies, money managers and financial institutions to encourage the shift towards investments in healthier portfolios. Secondly, we have called for the establishment of a forum so that stakeholders can come together on specific solutions to reduce the burden of NCDs. Digital technologies in particular, the near ubiquitous use of mobile phones have ushered in a societal transformation that can be tapped for better health outcomes. Emerging 5 and 6G technologies, artificial intelligence, robotics, blockchain and the use of drones is shaping the future of healthcare in ways that is unprecedented but it is particularly relevant for NCDs and it is critical that we get ahead of the curve. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commission has also emphasized the need for a new economic paradigm for NCDs. We have called for full cost accounting of the total societal burden of NCDs and for the integration of NCDs into human capital rankings and development indices which are likely to dictate countries borrowing costs as soon as 2025. The Commission recognizes that domestic financing for NCDs ought to be the mainstay. But in addition, we strongly feel the need for global catalytic support and for that reason, we have recommended a multi-donor NCDs trust fund and ways of collecting solidarity levies on tobacco and alcohol, both globally and at a national level. We have also additionally called on international financial institutions to encourage lending for NCDs. Countries have been encouraged to raise taxes on tobacco and alcohol and consider evidence-based fiscal measures for other unhealthy products. Uh, as we all know, these are both revenue generating as well as health promoting. Here, I would also like to convey that some recommendations did not receive consensus from the Commission yet and thus were not included in the report. And I would like to flag two in particular accountability of the private sector and a mechanism for that 
and the tax on sugar sweetened beverages. Despite this disagreement, the Commission has put forward a bold agenda. The Commission is now deliberating on what its course of action should be for its next phase and will come up with a plan shortly. Thank you for your attention.